First of all, we want to ta thank each and every one of you for taking time out of your busy day to come uh, join us this morning as we introduce our new uh, Director of Athletics. Uh, this morning gives me a great honor and privilege to introduce our new, excuse me, this loud, our new Director of Athletics as we embark upon a new journey here at Hampton University. Uh, Eugene Marshall will take over as Director of Athletics starting tomorrow, July 1st. Uh, he will be taking over for Mr. Novell Dickerson, who did a great job in transforming us for the last two years. Let's give Mr. D a hand. We just want to thank you for such a great job, Mr. D. Uh, Mr. Marshall brings over two decades of athletic administration experience to Hampton University. Most recently, Mr. Marshall served as a deputy director of athletics for Queens, University, Queens College in New York where he reported to the assistant VP for athletics. He worked at a program that had 18 teams. Prior to that, Marshall was director of athletics at Iona College, overseeing some of the Gales most successful moments, including two NCAA tournament appearances for men's basketball and the program's first ever at-large bid. With that in mind, I'd like to introduce everyone to Mr. Eugene Marshall, our next director of athletics. Thanks, Mr. Williams. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. First off, I'd like to thank God where all my blessings flow. And if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here today. I would also like to thank Dr. Harvey for this wonderful opportunity and to be around this awesome university with an awesome athletic program, very historic, and a great staff. I'd also like to thank Dr. Smith for facilitating the search process that brought me here. Uh, I'd also, I look forward and want to thank Mr. Dickerson for his continued effort in sustaining the standard of excellence here at Hampton University. And as we move forward with our focus on the Department of Athletics, we're going to look at academic, athletic success. We're going to look at fiscal compliance accountability, also social responsibility and while providing our student athletes with the greatest possible experience during their four years at Hampton University, which I call and is part of the motto in education for life, while winning championships on a regular basis. I would like Mr. D to stand up and would you please uh, uh, give him a round of applause, Mr. D. <laughs> Athletics is the front porch of the university. And I will aggressively continue to get out in the community and talk about Hampton University and Pirate Athletics. I think it's important that we get out regionally, nationally, internationally, and tell the story. Because people need to know what we have here. And I'd like to get out and aggressively meet with the senior administration staff, the board of trustees, administrative staff, students, student athletes, our coaches, athletic department staff, alumni, the Hampton Roads community, as well as our local, state, national political leaders, our corporate sponsors, and supporters of our Hampton nation. We also want to communicate in a various number of ways. You know, I want to be at and have our staff at university and athletic related activities. We want to be at athletic contests, both home and away, talking about Hampton University athletics, how we can help our student, ath our student athletes continue to strive and succeed. We want to connect, whether it is through our media, whether it's TV, radio, internet, or all parts of social media. I think it's important that we get out and also thank the people who have supported this program and the university, because I call them the team behind our teams. I know folks wonder it's different from a guy that's uh, spent the last half decade in northern New Jersey. Why would he want to come to Hampton? Well, I think I can answer that question uh, pretty easily. Uh, my high school basketball coach, who was also my grammar school gymnastics teacher and park and recreations instructor 
instilled in me at an early age, which I didn't know what it was, academic, athletic, and social excellence, I did not know that that was a standard of excellence and an education for life because I was too young to understand that. Coach Mel Henderson, uh, Edward Mel Henderson Sr., class of 1960, uh, Hampton University, at that time Hampton Institute, demanded that all of his student athletes, include me, prescribe to that and thrive under those conditions. Uh, I did not, like I said, I did not realize until years later that that's what Hampton University was all about. I just thought that was Coach Henderson pushing us. And it was him pushing us, but he was trained that way in the late 50s, and he carried us. Tonight, uh, this, this morning, I had the distinct honor of having his wife, Hampton alum, and his son, Edward Jr., and also Sharita, his daughter, for coming today, because they're in the community to support me. Would you please stand? That's part of my family that's down here, so I feel right at home. Also, in 2001, I had the opportunity when Dr. Smith became the president of Ramapo College to come down and meet with then Director of Athletics and now MEAC Commissioner Dr. Dennis Thomas. Dr. Thomas gave me a, a, a tour of the facilities, the university, and also the athletic department, but he also discussed philosophy. And then that standard of excellence came back again. And one of the things that I tried to do moving forward in all of my places was to use that. And it was especially important, uh, the social aspect. Academics uh, at different places, we were able to uh, improve our student athlete academic rate almost 30% when I was at pra uh, Ramapo College. We went from 40% graduation rate to 75% graduation rate of student athletes when I left. So that was important. Athletically, we won championships just about in every place I went, including West Point, where it is very difficult to get student athletes to not only be successful academically, but also be successful militarily, and then be successful uh, physically, and then, oh, by the way, be successful athletically. That's fourth on the list, because we're building the future leaders there at West Point. And we won championships, including the women's basketball team had their first NCAA appearance, and we played in, um, in, in Nor Norfolk in 2006. So I'm a firm believer that you can have an academically strong athletic department and you can still win championships. But as I move forward, uh, Dr. Thomas was able, and we still maintained a, a, a friendship up until today. I was always able to talk to him about different ideas. Uh, and again, it reverts back to Hampton. But I've been pretty blessed in my uh, athletic career to have had a, a group of people which I call my advisory council. And one of them happens to be local. Uh, president John Broderick, who was the president of Old Dominion University, was my high school RA. And so he's had a chance to watch me grow for the last 38 years. You know, some good, some bad, life is like that. But he's always been by my side and he chuckles because he saw me as a, as I call a snotty nose, 18 year old kid uh, coming from New Jersey, going to Boston. And uh, he was one of the first people that I met. And then, you know, 38 years later, I'm now in the same region that he is. Uh, also, there's uh, a couple of retired Lieutenant, General, Lieutenant Generals from West Point. General uh, Bill Lennox, who helped to hire me at West Point, along with Athletic Director Kevin Anson at the time. General um, Buster Hagenbach, who was a superintendent when I was there. I learned a lot from them. I also learned a lot from uh, the current superintendent, Robert Caslin, uh, who was the commandant of the cadets, which is the equivalent of a vice president or a dean of students at a regular institution. Uh, they all uh, bought into having a, a strong athletic program, even at a tough, rigid academic institution like the United States Military Academy. Then I've also had a chance to stay in touch with football, even though we didn't have it at some of the places. But we had Lee McElroy, who was at uh, Albany, and Keith Tribble, Damon Evans, Floyd Keith, in my roles with the BCA as a former president, board of, uh, board of directors of the Black Coaches Association. 
uh, Bernard Franklin of the NCAA, uh, Merritt Norvell, uh, Robert Constance, who's a major fundraiser at Rutgers University. We discussed fundraising strategies, how to develop a fundraising plan. Uh, he does it for the whole University of Rutgers, and we've worked together, and we've talked already about what we're going to do to, to support uh, the development areas here at Hampton University. Uh, my folks and my family at uh, Queens College, uh, China Jude and Daryl Jacobs, for their support. And then uh, Ramon Flanagan, who could not make it today, is the f head football coach at Lincoln University. Just to name a few of the people that I talk to on a regular basis, because um, there's a team wherever you go in athletics. No one person has all the answers. I sure don't, and I never will. But when you have a good community and a good supporting cast out in the public, you can always share ideas. You know, that's why I said I look forward to working with Mr. D. He has the, the history and the knowledge of this institution, and, and I plan to sit down with him and, and spend my time with him. And, you know, as we go on this, this year, spend a lot of time together talking and learning. Part of this job is learning. I'm going to spend a lot of time with coaches, staff, administrators, students, student athletes, faculty and staff. I'm going to get out, sit in your offices, and listen. I don't have all the answers, but together we will have the answers. And it's a team. Athletics is a team sport, I call it. And we can't be successful unless everybody in this room, in this region, and around the nation helps us become successful. Uh, I'd like to finally talk about my family, uh, who has been on this journey with me in athletics for this is my 29th, completing my 29th year in intercollegiate athletics. And without a family that supports you and understands athletics, it wouldn't be possible. Uh, I have a, uh, a brother who's in D.C. who is, who is uh, kind of guiding me through this because he's going through the same situation. He just moved from North Carolina to Washington, and he's in transition. Uh, I have a sister who's up in, the, in New Jersey along with my parents who are very supportive. And it's very ironic because uh, Coach Henderson uh, used to always remind me that his mentor was my dad. So he felt, and I'm happy that he did, that he would be my mentor. And so for up until uh, almost a year and a half, two years ago, he was. And uh, when I got my first head coaching job, uh, I was on the phone with him, and the next day, he said, don't celebrate, we're going to a clinic, and off we went. And I never stopped since then. Uh, my uh, kids are at home. Get ready for, uh, some are getting ready for college, uh, some are getting ready to go back to work, and others are preparing for graduate school. So uh, my oldest son, Jason, my daughter, Jackie, who just graduated from Iona College, and my son, Eugene the uh, Third, are getting ready for college and working on their basketball skills and getting ready. So everybody's, they said, Dad, you take care of what you have to do. We got to take care of our stuff. So I'm happy about that. Uh, the biggest supporter, and the love of my wife, my love of my life, my co-pilot, Phyllis Marshall, who came with me down to uh, make sure that everything was okay before she dropped me off. I felt like my mom and my dad would drop me off <laughs> to go to college. Although, when we rode across the Chesapeake Bay Bridge, she was like, I don't know about this. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I don't know about this. But uh, I couldn't have gone where I've gone. I couldn't have, have been successful as I have been and I couldn't be here without her, and I want to thank you for everything. I'll close, because I don't want to be too long-winded, by thanking Dr. Harvey again for this awesome opportunity, and Dr. Smith, who I, I, I enjoy our time together before, and I'm going to enjoy our time together now. Uh, I'd like to thank the Board of Trustee members, senior administration staff, the athletic department staff, our coaches, our students, our student athletes, faculty, staff, alumni, and, and Hampton Nation, friends and supporters, for taking time out to come to this joyous occasion. I'll close by saying God bless and go Pirates. Thank you. Okay. All right, at this time, uh, we'll let Mr. Marshall fill any questions that anyone might have. So, go for it. Yes, sir. I am Jim David Teal with the Daily Press. How are you? I'm well, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned this is your 29th year in 
at collegiate athletics. What leads a young man who's got a promising career at IBM to give that up and get into this crazy business of that collegiate athletics? Probably not wrapped too tight, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, athletics has always been my life, coaching, basketball. Uh, I've been, been blessed. My father's been around it forever. Uh, again, Coach Henderson in high school, Coach Calhoun in college. Uh, it was an opportunity. You know, when you're working hard, it's one thing to have a job. It's another thing to have a passion. So for 29 years, I've had a passion, not a job. You know, when you put in a lot of hours that we put in, and I know these coaches, especially football coaches now getting ready for the season, and the other coaches, what they do, uh, the strength coaches who are here at 5 in the morning, and if they didn't love it, they wouldn't be here. And so that's why I'm here, because I love what I'm doing. The hours don't matter, because it's not a 9 to 5 job. So I left IBM to become a, a CEO of a department instead of a CEO of a corporation. This is a good day. <laughs> uh, you're 55 about to turn 56. Yep. Uh, there have been several athletic directors here over the last year. Do you view this as a destination? I, I kind of put it in God's hands. Um, I've never come to a place saying that I'm going to the next job. I've been very blessed. You know, when I was at Pratt Institute, I was there for 11 years. Uh, three of those years, uh, I worked as the part-time basketball coach and I worked at IBM and I got an opportunity to be an athletic director. Didn't know what was happening. The College of Staten Island opened up. I didn't ask for the job, they called me. Uh, I was happy being there. Um, then, then Ramapo College opened up. And then the United States Military Academy, uh, with a friend of mine became the first time AD. He said he needed a veteran person. I went. Uh, I went back because a colleague of mine passed away who I had mentored. And so I said, hey, I'll go back. The president asked me to come back. The president that replaced Dr. Smith. So I went back. Opportunity came to go to uh, Iona. I went. I was a little ill, and I decided that it was time for me to take a step back because uh, I wanted to be 55. <laughs> and I enjoyed being 56 coming up. So I had to, to slow down. Uh, and then uh, I went to Queens to do some work, and then this opportunity came. I'm not looking to leave. Uh, tomorrow and probably some today. I know Mr. D is not going to let me get out of here without us getting some work done. And, and I'm going to roll up my sleeves and go to work. I'm not looking down the road. I'm looking at here. This could be a destination. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't rule it out. Um, you know, I think what's exciting for me is that, you know, uh, I've been a, a joke, not a joke, but an envy and a joke for 29 years. I haven't had to move. They even, NCA did a little um, map of my uh, travels and it was like a, 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 a golf course with different holes because it was all in the same area but you know you get led to a different place um, but I don't really see this as as not being at home I have a childhood friend who couldn't make it today Sandy Williams who we grew up together and he's been down here so he called me the other day and he's like all right we got to go play golf we got to go I said I got to work <laughs> but so you know, I'm looking, I'm looking to be here. I'm looking to be here to, to, to move this program on. I mean, it's, I call it a, 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 we're a four by four relay. Mr. D just passed me the baton. So I'm looking to run. I'm not looking to, to go to the finish line. I'm looking to run right now. So that's, hopefully that answers your question. Yes? I'm Joe Lewis, president of the Boosters. This is not a question to invite to come to our Boosters meetings and inform the Boosters of the program. I look forward to it. All right, I look forward to it. You have a lot of experience in, in external uh, affairs and day fair. I talked to a bunch of your co-workers who you raved about your work on that. I paid them off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, how important is the, the fundraising side, especially in, in today's climate? 
escalating budgets and, and, and such? It's critical. It's critical because uh, budgets are fixed. Expenses are not. And we need to get alternative resources to continue to move our programs to compete with other institutions. So it's very, it's very important. Um, I call it friend raising because uh, people don't give to people. Friends give to friends. So I, I think a major part of my job is to go out and develop friendships, develop relationships with the Alumni Association. Uh, I can't do it by myself, but as a team, and once everybody uh, goes, you know, here's where we're trying to go, uh, I think we will be able to do uh, significantly well in raising the funds. Because at the end of the day, it's all about student athletes and students. So we have to tie in our friendship relationships to the advancement of our student athletes. Graduating and matriculating our student athletes, putting them in a great position after they graduate, winning some championships so they can feel good while they leave, and also <coughs> setting a social responsibility for them that they will carry out past their graduation. Because once they leave here, I call it a, a, a car wash, because once you get pushed out that at the end of the car, when your car is clean, you're on your own. And so we have to do everything we can during the time they come in as freshmen to when they're seniors to get them ready. And we can't do it by handshake. We need funds to do it. We need to have academic advisors in place. We need to make sure that they're healthy, that they eat properly. If we want them to be successful, we've got to make sure that they get their rest. We also have to have compliance people in to make sure that we stay within the NCAA rules because they change all the time. And so those are the things that we're going to talk about. So when we talk about it, fundraising and friend raising, we're going to lay out what we need to have these programs to be successful and our students to be successful. Because they're going to be the fundraising recipients, but they're going to also be obligated by their good experience that they have here at Hampton University. They're going to, go, they're going to be willing to give when they start working. And I think we have to realize that we have four years with each student and maybe two years with some transfers to develop a relationship with them so that they can become donors in the future. You mentioned the ever-changing NCAA rule. This is a turbulent time. Yes, it is. For the association reform and restructuring. As this moves forward to perhaps a resolution, as well, where do you see institutions such as Hampton conferences, such as the Minneapolis or Tech Below, that major conference on where do you see them fitting in in the new structure will make job even more challenging? Well, I, I think uh, Hampton has a place, the MEAC has a place. And I think that's why we have to uh, go out and raise enough money because we want to be able to control our own destiny and not have somebody else control it. So that at the end of the day, uh, I can sit with Dr. Harvey, Dr. Smith, and he can, and Dr. Harvey will, will guide us to where he wants us to go but I want to be able to present him with all the facts and also all the resources. Because if we don't have the resources, then we're at the whim of whatever. And so our goal is not to be at the whim because we have coaches that are, that, that are hired to win championships. So we have to provide them with all the necessary resources to win championships. And our goal as we're moving forward is to position ourselves to be ready to do whatever the NCAA uh, has set up. I think that's our goal. That, that's the biggest thing right now. I'm not too concerned about what they're going to do. We have to have ourselves ready. And I think we're well on that way. We just want to continue the process. Yes? Good morning, Mr. Marshall. Good morning. Thank you, Marshall. I'm John Wood from the current National Hampton Alumni Association National President. Nice to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, I, I heard you talk about your part of the Hampton Nation, and now you're an official Hamptonian. So on behalf of the National Hampton Alumni Association Incorporated, we welcome you to your new home by the sea. It was not new to you, because I listened to your, your commentary this morning. So to your home by the sea, welcome to your Hamptonian. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you.
Thanks. All right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you all again for joining us. If you would like to shake, shake Mr. Marshall's hand, please he'll meet you on your way out towards the door. Thank you. Have a great day.